When you're doing astrophotography, you're going to end up with gigabytes and terabytes of data from all of your imaging sessions. And managing that data properly and making sure that it is saved securely is critical for the hobby, especially because it gives you the opportunity to do multi-year projects for truly mind-blowing images. And today, we're going to go into the ins and outs of data management for astrophotography. Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to talk about data, in particular the gigabytes and terabytes of data that we accumulate uh, throughout the hobby. And I have a confession to make, I've been very bad at managing that data. For each of the imaging sessions that I've done, I've just kept the final stacked image. Uh, it's before the post-processing and then after post-processing and that's pretty much all that I kept. And that was my first mistake because you should also keep the subframes, the sub exposures that make up the final image. That way you can combine them the year after, for instance, with new sub exposures that you are taking. I did a second very big mistake, which is I didn't have proper backups of my data. Well, I did, but they were not well organized. And I actually lost all of the data uh, on my hard disk uh, a few months ago when there was a security breach in Western Digital uh, Drive systems for some reason. Um, and all Western Digital customers using that particular hard drive were affected. Uh, so that was not great. Fortunately, I had backups here and there all over the place and I managed to restore all of the data that I had lost, but it's something that really kept me on my toes. And third mistake that I did is I didn't keep proper track of the equipment that I was using for each of my captures. But it's always good to know what you've used for each of the captures. So today we're going to see about how to resolve all of that. In terms of the second point, which is data security. Now I actually, uh, my final processed images, I have them in multi multiple places online. Um, and more in particular, I have them on an Amazon Drive and a Google Drive, just to make sure that they're uh, not lost. And as people who have been on Astrobin when there was this major data um, problem and many people lost a lot of uh, their images, they know the importance of saving at least your final images in full resolution somewhere. But not only that, what I've done is that I've also bought a hard disk enclosure um, that contains, that contains actually, uh, two hard disks like this one uh, in there. And I have configured this enclosure to be uh, to work in RAID 1. And RAID 1 means that there is a data duplication between the two hard disks. So whenever, so this whole case from the computer's point of view looks as if it were a single hard disk. Um, and what happens in the background when the computer sends data to this uh, hard disk case uh, the data is copied onto both hard drives synchronized. So if one of the hard drives fail, then I can always get the, the data back from the, the one that's still intact. Now this particular case has its own problems. It doesn't have an internal fan and hard disks tend to get hot. Um, so I'll, I'll be putting links down below in the description to uh, RAID capable uh, hard disk cases, but this one is probably not going to be one of them. Uh, because high temperatures can affect the lifespan of your hard disk. So that's the first thing that I did. Make sure that I have like my data, uh, my subframes, my um, FITS files, all of that on two hard disks at the same time and it's completely transparent to me. Uh, and in addition to that, I have my uh, stacked images and post-processed images on a different hard disk uh, as well, just to make sure. Um, with that, I should be uh, sufficiently protected from data loss. But you know, once bitten, twice shy, maybe even that's not enough. And maybe I should like mail hard disks to my parents-in-law house or my parents' house in France, just for disaster recovery purposes. Uh, <laughs> maybe I won't go that far, but you know, in theoretically, this is something that you could be thinking about. Anyway, we've talked about point two. The data security aspect is quite important. Let's talk about point one, what data to keep. Okay, now in terms of data management itself, 
Um, let me show you what I have on my hard drive. It's a mess, it's a hot mess. So I have this Astro folder in here, and you can see I have tons of like um, object names with dates, with things. If I open any of those folders, I'll have like processed pictures. I have the master dark, master flat, master light, but I haven't been very consistent about it. At least, you know, I can go back and reprocess things. Uh, which is not bad. I have log files for some reason. Um, it's not ideal, let's say. It's it's a bit of a mess. And ideally, uh, I should not be keeping just the stacked frames and the uh, processed frames that I've done. I should be keeping the subframes, the sub-exposures, because in the end, that means that I'll be able to stack all of the subframes together with data that I took maybe a year later or a year earlier, so that I can have a multi-year kind of project that includes more imaging time on the same target. It is still possible to kind of do that with the master stack, so with the stacked frame, uh, but it is not as efficient as and as it won't give as good results as having the actual individual subframes. Also. What I'm lacking here is any, any sort of metadata about uh, my equipment or date. Sometimes I have the date in here, sometimes I don't have it. Like I don't know when or using what I took those images. And that's also a big problem. Uh, so when I thought about that, I saw there's uh, data images and there's metadata uh, on those images. And that means that I should be using a database, really. I should, uh, I should be creating a, a, a SQL database and then storing the images as blobs, and then I could have the metadata on tables and, and a relationship diagram, whatever. Uh, but I think that's probably going a bit too far. Uh, some geeks might uh, go all the way, but I think I'm still going to use a folder structure. So what folder structure do I want to put in place? For now, I'm just going to forget about this Astro folder and I'm just cre going to tra create a new folder and I'll call it uh, IC1805 because I took some exposures of the Heart Nebula uh, recently. And uh, I've decided that instead of having like a, a, a lot of names in here, sometimes there's like Messier denominations, sometimes they're actually the name of the object the common name of the object that I imaged, I would have the actual code of that object, the catalog number, whether if it's Messier catalog, Messier text priority, and then MGC and IC catalogs or sharpless, whatever um, catalogs work for the object. That way I know exactly what to look for. In there, I want to keep my stacked frame, my processed frame, and my subframes. Now, stacked frame and processed frames, that's easy. Uh, I'll just drag and drop the fit file or XISF file uh, for my stacked, processed, and pre-processed. Uh, for the subframes, what should I take? Should I take the actual light frames? Should I take the calibrated frames? Should I take, if it's a color sensor, the debayered frames? Or should I take the registered frames that have been uh, uh, aligned to one another? Or even if I used uh, normalized scale gradient, do I take the normalized frames? And I thought about it, and in the end, I think I should just take the calibrated frames because um, I don't think there's going to be a lot of advances in terms of the algorithm used to calibrate frames. So I'm not losing uh, much, and I don't think in the future I will want to recalibrate my frames. Um, so I'm going to take the calibrated frames. I'm not taking the debayered frames uh, because maybe there will be a better debayering algorithm in PixInsight in the future. I don't know. And uh, also, like uh, we've seen new methods to uh, stack uh, OSC uh, one-shot color data in the weighted batch pre-processing script very recently. And so I want to make sure that I keep all of my um, options available by keeping the calibrated frames. The calibrated frames, they look good, they're not aligned, they're not debayered, they're not normalized, they're not anything, which means that I can process them again, almost from scratch, and join them with other uh, calibrated frames. So this is what we're gonna do, because I actually have um, a heart nebula image that I took recently, and you can see uh, the heart nebula folder itself is 58 gigabytes, and that's a single night 
of data, if I remember correctly. And uh, we have uh, the, the beard stuff, we have the master images, we have normalized, we have registered, and we have the final image that I processed. And within the calibrated folder, I have the flat frames that were calibrated with dark flats, or bias frames, and then I have the light frames that were calibrated with everything. So I'm just going to drive uh, to, to drag that folder into my IC1805 uh, folder here. And this is done. So in my IC1805 folder, I'll just set this to uh, calibrated. And I might add as well uh, the date. So this was in October 2021. And uh, maybe like the, uh, the camera, ASI533, sharp star 61. That way it gives me an idea when I look at that folder immediately what's the field of view that I was having uh, when I took it, etc. So it, it contains a bit of the metadata about those frames. And then I can put in the uh, process frame. So I have my processed stack and my stack itself. So the stack itself, I just need the master light. So I'll just put it in here. And I'll also put my uh, processed frame. In here and now we have everything so I'm going to add like stacked uh, folder and I think I'll just leave those images as they are because they have timestamps on them so uh, even if I like put a lot of stack stacked images in there uh, I won't be having like 20 million stacks of this so I think this is uh, this is fine and finally I think that in this folder I want to add um, a, f a text document called details where I add information about the equipment that I was using. So uh, ASI 533MC Pro Optolong L Extreme. And here I have it. So those are the details about uh, my session. And I could, like if it's within the same month, I will probably add further calibrated frames in here. That's not uh, a problem. Uh, it's that way uh, and maybe even next year's frames, I can put them in the same folder, but if I ever get like frames from a completely different setup, com completely different field of view, then I might, you know, amend that. So I'm still like flexible about how I will do that folder architecture. And the more I look into it, the more I think like maybe I should set up a database. <laughs> but I think that for now, this is good enough. And this is what I will be doing for uh, the future. To summarize in the end, we have data that is safe via various means. Uh, so I have a RAID 1 hard disk, uh, so that the data is copied onto two drives at once. I have uh, data that is on Google Drive and Amazon Drive and Google Photos as well. And I also have data on multiple other hard disks at home. I think that should give me, get me covered. If I wanted disaster recovery, I'd probably send that data to my family in France, uh, but that's probably going a bit too far. Um, and so data safety is there. Then we have the data management, where we have the calibrated frames, meaning we can go back to an object, use the old data, combine it, combine it with new data. It really opens up a lot of possibilities. And we then have the uh, master data. So the uh, we also have the master data, like the data that we've actually processed for the final image, which we can always renew based on the calibrated frames if there's any progress in stack stacking techniques. And uh, finally, we also have the metadata about the session, the equipment that this was taken with. So we have all of the information in there. Um, it's not the greatest uh, structure. And if you have uh, suggestions or comments about what you do to manage your data, please feel free to leave them down below. But I want to put that out there because this is not a topic I've ever seen really addressed um, in the astrophotography hobby, but I think it's quite important. And I'm, I've been very bad at it for such a long time. And I think like beginners in particular should start from the right foot to have proper data management. And that's pretty much it for this uh, video. If you think that this was useful and you like astronomy, astrophotography, and you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Feel free to go down below, click that subscribe button, that bell icon, etc. Leave a comment while you're at it. And also leave a like or dislike on the video to tell YouTube that people are reacting to this video and it might interest others as well. And uh, with that, as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget, whenever you can, to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.